Hey beer tubers, Ryan back with another episode of San Diego Beer Vlog. Thanks for joining me once again. Today I'm here to settle the score, so to speak, with a beer from the Orkney Brewery out of Scotland, and this is Skull Splitter. This is their 8.5% Scotch Ale. So what, what score am I selling? Well, Jameson's reviewed this beer, didn't care for it at all. He disagrees with Daniel, who really likes it, says it's his favorite Scotch Ale, so... I've never actually had this beer. It's kind of expensive in four packs, so I finally uh, found it at a shop that sold singles, so uh, let's get this thing poured and uh, see who is, see which side I kind of go with in terms of uh, this particular Scotch Ale. Let's see, pours, we got about a finger of sort of off-white, sort of yellowish head. Pours, um, it's it's sort of hazy. It's not completely clear. Don't know if it's ball condition. Doesn't look like it. Getting a nice sort of uh, lightish ruby red. It's kind of dark orange notes on there as well. Nice looking beer. Kind of what I expect Scotch Ale to kind of look like. Let's get the aroma on it. A lot of fruitiness coming from this one. Maybe a slight smokiness in there. I know the yeast strains, Scotch yeast strains, tend to have a touch of smokiness. I don't. I doubt they use peated malt. Maybe they do a touch, but I get big kind of like fig plum notes, and then like a deep caramel note in there as well. Um, some alcohol uh, notes on there as well, but nothing too serious. It is eight and a half percent. So yeah, just big malty beer, maybe almost a, there's almost like a, a I want to say like a spicy smokiness, so to speak, on there, which is kind of interesting. But uh, let's give this thing a try. Cheers. Yeah, that's really nice. I mean, it kind of says in the bottle, it's supposed to be sort of like lighter, smoother drinking beer. Kind of have to agree with that. I was kind of expecting maybe a touch bigger mouthfeel. The plus side is, is that it's not too s s kind of sticky on the tongue and it doesn't seem to be too cloying. Um, I'm drinking this probably a uh, touch under cellar temperature, maybe uh, 60 degrees or so. So I've let it warmed up, you see that you get a bit more alcohol, but um, sort of follows the nose as far as the flavors go. Up front I get big fruit character, kind of like a sweet apple, maybe a slight bit of cherry notes going into more of that sort of uh, plum note, plum definitely in there as well up front. Midway through you get some, some nice caramel notes some breadiness as well. The more I drink on it, the more in the back end I sort of get this, it's a touch of molasses but not like too thick. Kind of plays with that caramel note breadiness but I don't know, it, it seems like, it almost seems like to me it tastes like they maybe like ferment this beer at a warmer temperature because on the back end I kind of get sort of fusily alcohol notes that it's, it's, it's kind of off-putting. I mean I like the flavor enough and I mean, 8.5%, it's definitely a big kind of warming type of beer. It has some good flavors going there, but the alcohol is getting a little too distracting for me at the back end. I mean, if it had bigger, bolder flavors, I think up front, the alcohol wouldn't quite be uh, as present in terms of uh, the overall taste, the overall kind of feel of the beer on your palate. But yeah, it's, it's, it gets that kind of fusely alcohol note on the back end that kind of kind of is a little distracting from the kind of nice fruity and kind of caramelly uh, slightly molasses malt notes up front so yeah I mean it's a really enjoyable beer but I, I don't think I can put it up there into the excellent category so I'm just gonna go a uh, straight B on this one I think it's definitely above average I wish it was a bit I mean it does have some little bit nice subtle complexity to it which I really do enjoy but um, Maybe this one needs to age more, I don't know. Maybe it's a batch that got a little too warm on their fermentation or something, but 
Yeah, I, I would like to sit this one down for an extended period of time and hopefully get some of those alcohol notes to fade away. Then I think it'd be a much uh, nicer drinking beer. So it's going to wrap up my review of Skull Splitter. And uh, I sort of split in the middle between Daniel and Jameson on this one. I don't, I, I don't think it's you know quite as bad as Jameson says. I don't think it's quite as good as Daniel says. So uh, sorry, guys. It doesn't really help out, does it? But... Yeah, I just think it's pretty above average beer. So uh, it's going to wrap it up. Until next time, please comment and subscribe. Cheers.